welcome back to the junk drawer where you never know what you're going to find, including us. <laughs> this is my husband, Kevin. Hey, everybody. Today we are here, and he is here with me, to do a Universal Yums box. You've probably seen these videos before. If you haven't, Universal Yums is a subscription box where each month you get a different country and you get all sorts of fun trivia and facts and snacks from that country. They have different plans, a small, medium, and large, so make sure you go check out their website. I highly recommend it. We've really, really enjoyed doing it. And today, we are going to Germany. Are you excited about Germany? I am. I'm hopeful for Germany. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm excited. Oh, okay. I do not know what to expect. Do you know what to expect? No, not really. Um, Pretzels. No, hopeful. I don't know. Hopeful. Let's just say hopeful. So the booklet comes and each month it gives trivia, which is one of my favorite things for us to do here. But also it gives a brief description of every single item in the box, including English ingredients, because sometimes you cannot read the ingredients on package. So that's really nice, especially if you have allergies like in this house. And also included is always a interesting recipe and here is the picture for that recipe this month it is german breaded pork chops <laughs> i i didn't do that why do you do that because uh, i was going to absolutely butcher that they don't put little uh phonetics on top of these things so you should have seen the uh the Netherlands one, it, it couldn't be done. They also have a second in... Scandinavia. I'm sorry. They also have a second recipe in this one. It's a little, a little punch recipe. Strawberry, sugar, lemon, lemon peels, apple juice, Riesling. I am there. It's sparkling water. I am there for it. All right. So let's see what our first snacky is, Kevy. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I also want to point out, I just noticed this. On the map, they have fun little facts. Like down at the bottom, you can see that little castle. And it talks about that this is the castle that like inspires the Disney Cinderella castle, but it's 100 years older than the Cinderella story. So oh. just interesting little things on the map card that they give you. Yeah, we don't ever show that one, really. We just show it to say the country is, right? It's said clues and facts. And then on the back, they if you want to send it back in or take a picture and like scan it, you can do the rankings of the yums, what you really liked, your favorite, your worst, and your weirdest. We should start doing that. You yeah, like maybe, it. Maybe. All right, let's see what our first one is. Ooh, bonbons, Kevy. Bonbons. And I have not checked the ingredients. So while you are pulling out and showing the bag to everyone, I'm going to check out the ingredients on this. Here we go. They were buried all the way to the bottom. And they are something I can have. Those are cute. Okay, it says, you're in for a whole new world of flavor. And by that, we mean Kuglin, a type of chocolate that translates to globe. While Kuglin are one of the most popular types of chocolate, this one is extra special. For starters, it hails from Germany's oldest chocolate factory. It operated all the way back in 1804. Secondly, it's by far the factory's most famous creation to date, cherished by sweet lovers all across the country. Thirdly, its iconic spherical shape was designed to resemble the buttons on local salt miners jackets. And lastly, it's filled with decadent, what do you think that word is? Uh, okay, one of Germany's favorite flavors of gelatin. Okay. Ooh, okay. Fancy. They come fancy. <laughs> Let's say, Bubba. Florida might have tried to murder these. Yeah, they may have melted a little bit. That's okay. But they are cute little bonbons. But they're good. Here's the middle of it. They are really good. Mmm. The filling almost tastes like buttercream icing. It does, and there's a little bit of a mouthfeel to it that had me freak out just for a moment for your allergies because it kind of felt 
and it had a little bit of a taste like there could have been coconut in it. I really like the filling on them, but the filling is very sweet. Mm -hmm. I mean, you would only want a couple. I'm, I'm surprised he ate a second one like right now just because they're very, very sweet. It's buttercream but ice cream. It is buttercream filling. Tastes exactly like ice our buttercream. Yeah. yeah, it really does. All right. Are you ready for your first trivia, my friend? What do locals call the chancellor's office in Berlin? A, the green room. B, the washing machine. C, the aquarium. Or D, the brain. The brain. Pinky the brain. I would have thought so too. It's not. Hmm. It is B, the washing machine. That was actually my second guess. The I'm also giving second guesses just to see if my second guess is it. The chancellor's office is dubbed the washer machine because it's most unusual feature, a huge circular glass window that looks like a washing machine door. Gerard Schroeder, chancellor from 1998 to 2005, disliked the design, claiming people could see his bathroom. That didn't stop the office from earning Germany's top architecture prize in 2005. <laughs> okay. Let's see what is next. Onion rings. Pull out the onion rings, babe. Zeebles. Zeebles. They look like onion rings. Maybe they'll taste like Funyuns. All right, it says, celebrate Weimar's Onion Festival. Once October rolls around, there's one particular festival in everyone's mind. No, it's not Oktoberfest. That happens in September. We're talking about the Weimar Onion Festival, originating back in... 1653 as a way for locals to share their onions for the winter it's germany's oldest festival 157 years older than oktoberfest today over 300,000 annual attendees stock up on fresh onions relish the famous onion pie and watching the crowning of the onion queen open up this outrageously crunchy oniony yum and you'll see what all the hype is about if you found another place to uh, visit when we go to Europe. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we yeah, yeah. We go yeah, to the yeah. Onion Festival. We try all the onions. <laughs> I would love that. I love onions. It's Brand. a little, little onion ring that looks it's like a, a uh, it looks like a funion. Like a baby funion yeah. and uh, or uh, uh, oh, what is the word I'm looking for? The octopus rings. What do they call that? What's a, what's an octopus ring called? What? When you order octopus. What do they call those? Calamari? Calamari rings. <laughs> I couldn't come up with it. Tastes like a funyun. Mm -hmm. That's what I was going to say. Tastes exactly like a funyun, y'all. But it actually has a little more onion flavor than a than a regular funyun. Or my first one did anyways. Yeah, they, it's got something else with the onion. Or maybe mm -hmm. it's a different type of onion flavor. But yeah, very oniony and very tasty. Very good, yeah. yeah. Um, I approve of those. I, en I enjoy those. Okay. According to myth, what lies under the Kifhasser Hills? Spell it. K-Y-F-F-H-A with two little symbols above it. U-S-E-R. Yeah, see? You thought that I was... Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Okay. And we've never heard you murder a word before on TV, on screen. <laughs> An English word, no less. <laughs> He's right. All right what are my He's right. Okay, moving on. What you ready? Yes. Are you ready? <laughs> okay. A, a sleeping emperor who died in 1190. B, a golden ox that grants wishes. C, a pond of immortality. Or D, a road to the city of Saint. Hmm. I'm going to go with C. My second choice would be D. <laughs> it is A, a sleeping emperor who died in 1190. Legend has it that it 12th century Holy Roman Emperor Frederick I sleeps beneath these hills in central Germany. While he allegedly perished in a battle, a legend arose that he was bewitched into eternal slumber and that once his beard grows around 
his table three times, he'll awaken again. In the meantime, you can still visit these hills to meet him, a 19th century monument of him, that is. Nice. Interesting. I love this trivia. It's such <laughs> random, <laughs> weird things that, like, you would never look. I don't know. It's so fun. Okay, you ready for the next thing? Mm. I don't know about these. I'm not I'm not thrilled with ketchup chips. It's ketchup potato sticks is our next thing. There's a I, lot of there's ketchup, ketchup, lot of stuff, ketchup comes stuff out of these mm -hmm. boxes. Ketchup flavored stuff. Uh-huh. And seems to come out of these boxes. I love fresh tomatoes. You love fresh tomatoes. I don't. <laughs> thank you, Ben. <laughs> I don't love a lot of artificial tomato flavor. Like when it's really artificially, and a lot of these ketchup these ones like, tend to be. Now, the if, if it looks like from the bag, it looks like the Andy Cap. You're not. Hold it up there. There you go. There you go. The, the Andy Cap. The hot fries. Cut, yeah, the hot fries. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, All right, let's see what this one says. It says, the German snack for anyone who loves fries. Is any food combo as iconic as ketchup and french fries? In Germany, yes. Ketchup, fries, and currywurst. The classic dish made by pouring a mix of curry powder and ketchup over grilled German bratwurst or sausage and pommies fries was first made in 1949 Berlin. You would love that, actually. I would actually. I'm like listening I would to eat this. Like three plates of that with mashed potatoes. He would love this. <laughs> I, I as I'm reading it, I'm like, oh my gosh, he's gonna make me make this. <laughs> now, um, really, now it's. Um, across all major cities, but none more than Berlin, it's even tradition for every mayoral candidate to have a photo op at Currywurst stand. At a Currywurst stand, here you'll taste the spicy ketchup and fries classic in any extra crispy snack. Even without the worst, this snack might be Berlin's best. These are more like the veggie sticks that you can get yes. because they're hollow. Oh, yeah. Look at I thought that. you were going to say the the thickness of them. Okay. The thickness and the hollow. Yeah, I didn't even realize they were hollow, but that, that yeah. It's a, a, like the veggie sticks yeah. that you can buy. Love them. They're very good. Oh, they're not. Oh, I don't like those at all. <laughs> no. They really have an artificial tomato flavor. They're great. I can eat the whole bag right here. Hand me those onion rings, please. <laughs> I need a couple of them to get that <laughs> taste out of my mouth. <laughs> Love them. The best ketchup flavored stuff we've had come out of one of these bags. It was the most ketchupy flavor, which is why I didn't like it because it and it's pure. <laughs> Artificial ketchup. That is not what ketchup tastes like in any way. Oh, it absolutely is. Oh, gosh. No, yeah. it, I love ketchup. How much do I love ketchup? <laughs> You're used to eating the same ketchup. Whereas, like, I've had I've had various brands of ketchup. We almost always get the, the either the Walmart or the Heinz. You know, I've had, you know, Brooks ketchup is much sweeter. There's another one that's much tangier. Um, yeah. These, this was this was good ketchup. <laughs> Not at all. I really, really disliked that. Okay. Okay. Those are those are all yours. That's what I'm telling you. Okay. Number three. Let's okay. move on. Let's I need, to, I need one to move on. The two guesses I make correctly. Number three, according to German tradition, which is bad luck? A, shaking hands with the chimney sweep. B, saying cheers while toasting with water. C, tossing salt over your left shoulder. Or D, knocking on wood. You know the answer. It's gotta be one. I think you mean two. That's what I meant, yeah. Uh, when I pointed, I meant you just read answer number two. With uh, cheering. Uh, with water. With water, yeah. Um, number three, cheering with water. Okay, we had a minor phone issue. We are back. So let's just jump right into where we were because <laughs> that was a little disjarring. Sorry about that. Okay, so we just finished the ketchup jokes, which are a no-go. And I am excited about the next thing. 
Yeah. Lemon wait. Sure Why would you say such a thing? Lemon wafer bars. And while I am checking the ingredients, uh, I cannot. It just, although it doesn't have coconut, it says may contain, and it literally says traces of coconut. Yep. In parentheses. So I am bummed because lemon is my favorite. All right, so let me see what this one says. Show her by the package. It's kind of cute. It's got lemons all over it. That's cute. Waffles. It looks like those wafer cookies, you know, like the, the vanilla -y wafery cookies. Okay, this says, who doesn't love a squeeze of lemon on their schnitzel or a citrusy kick in their sauerkraut? With all the ways lemons are incorporated into their cuisine, you think Germany is a lemon orchards. Uh, you would think Germany's lemon orchards would go on for miles, except they actually don't grow natively at all. That's why Germany is the second biggest importer of the citrus in the whole world. Hmm. I didn't, never would have guessed that. I just find it hard to believe. Never would have guessed that. Oh, no, I mean, it makes sense. I mean, there's... there's... Does it? Yeah, because of where they're at. They don't have a place where citrus can naturally grow. No, but to be the second biggest importer of citrus, like, they're that into citrus is a little. That's what I was surprised about. It's basically, you break open the package and you get four of these. It's and they just look cookie. like, you know, the vanilla wafer cookies that you have in the store. It tastes like that, too. Like, you know, you usually get your chocolate and strawberry. Comes out with a powerful lemon punch. Not Ugh. like a pucker punch, but it's lemon. It's a lemon cookie. Mm, I wish I could try it. I love lemon. All right. Let's see what is next, my friend. You ready? Mm -hmm. Which game was invented in Germany? A, dominoes. B, battleship. C, Chinese checkers. Or D, Candyland. I'm going to say Candyland. You want to try one more time? Um, dominoes. It's Chinese checkers. <laughs> I promise. See, believe it or not, Chinese checkers was actually invented in Germany in 1892 based off a similar four-cornered game called Halma. The star-shaped version was originally named Stern Halma, which is Star Halma, until it was brought to the U.S. in 1928 and marketed as Chinese tech checkers to keep up with the trending interest in Asian imports. Well, I think I'm going to start answering with the craziest answers there are. <laughs> that appears to be the, the, the right one. Okay. I don't know if I explained this in the last one, but let's talk about the yum bag. So the yum bag real quick is they don't send it every single month but most months they have a yum bag and it is like little individual hard candies um or little taffy just any individual candy um for that country so i'm gonna pass it over to him and i don't know what all is in there but the first thing we're having is milk and honey caramels i think we had these in a halloween box I'm going to check the ingredients of it yep we had these in I'm almost, I am 90% certain we have these in a Halloween. So it says milk and honey on here. Do you think that this is milk and honey? Uh -huh. I think when we open it up, it looks like a slow poke. Oh. Or well, a, I don't know what wait, a slow what poke it? looks like. Not a slow poke. Same company makes slow pokes. The milk. Uh... Bit of honey? No. Oh, okay. 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 It's gonna have the center. It's gonna have a. It's gonna, gonna be a caramel with a different color of center in it. Okay. I'll let you open it up. I'm not right. <laughs> Unless you bite into it and find the center. So you take half and I'll take half. Oh well. Mm -mm. There's a weird flavor on that. Honey. But like a really strong, almost floral flavor. Dark, dark honey flavor. Like, like real strong. Yep. Very powerful. I did not care for that. You can have that all day long. I did like the texture of that candy. It almost like. And it tastes like the thing I was trying to describe. It does. I know what you're talking about. Cowtails. That's what they're called. I know. Yeah. Yep. And. 
Um, but the honey flavor is just, is that, I don't, I guess that's what it is. As soon as you bite into it, the outside is really good. The inside honey part of it, you get this smack of like intense, intense honey flavor. Yep. Whew, okay. That was a lot. Oh, we didn't read about it. Let's read about it. I'm sorry. On October 3rd, 1990, Germany separates, Germany's separate states were united as a single country for the first time in 45 years. Which is why every year people all over the country celebrate October 3rd as Unity Day. Parades, concerts, and fireworks make it easy to get in the spirit of unity. But what if we told you there was an excellent way to celebrate now? If you think the answer is these milk and honey caramels, then you'd be correct. They're a delicious union of creamy milk and sticky honey and an ultra soft caramel. Interesting. Interesting. All right, let's see what is next. Let's just do the other, the other um, yum, yum bag. bag. Yeah. So it looks like there is a couple different flavors, and one of them is a mystery. Or no, sorry. Yeah, there. There's grapefruit, apple. I will not have the grapefruit. Okay. There's a Johannesberry. Let's apple. Put, let's put that one because we've never had it. And. Never had that one either. And let's R -A -C -U -J -A. let's uh, Maracuja. let's split this. Looks like a pomegranate. I thought it looked like a dragon fruit. Sort of. There you go. Interesting. Yeah. The wrapper on this berry. Don't don't. We'll we'll split this because okay. you never heard of this berry. What is Johannesberry? Johannesberry. It's real dark. Like I thought it, and so I thought that the candy would be a little dark, and it's just like a white, no color. I like it. Okay. Really soft taffy. Right. But and sour, the berry. Sort of a sour, sour grapes. Sort of berry flavor. But very good. It was very good. I liked that. Do you want to try this one? Split it? Because yeah. we've never heard of it. Yeah, I'm going to split it. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm saying right now because we've never heard of this berry. And I checked the ingredients, so I'm good to go. Oh, we didn't read about this one either. It might tell us what these kind of berries are. Why are, what are we doing? Failing on the mission here, Kevy. This one's much more mild in flavor. Mm. But the other one was much better. Yeah. Still exact same texture. It's very like a soft, soft uh, taffy. Like a, a very soft now and later. Mm. Mm-hmm. Not nearly as sticky as an hour later can be. You pull caps off your feet. I don't know what to say about the flavor of that one. It was more mild. Tastes like a grapefruit to me, but it says I don't it's not think a it, grapefruit. Oh, I don't think it tastes like grapefruit, but I don't know that. I liked the first one better. But I'm failing on the job, people. I'm sorry. It says chewy candies in four juicy flavors. If there's one thing to learn from a Hansel and Gretel, it's that you shouldn't judge a book by its cover or a house by its cake walls. Sure, the sparkling sugar windows might seem super awesome, but we all know the witch on the other side was, well, not so super awesome. Keep that in mind with this yum. It may look plain as you unwrap it, but one chew and you will reveal a succulent burst of apple, passion fruit, black currant, or grapefruit. Passion fruit and black currant is what we had. And the black currant was the first one, and the second one's passion fruit, which makes sense because I'm not a huge passion fruit fan, and I wasn't a huge fan of that. That makes sense. I do not think that tastes like passion fruit. I, I like it. I thought it tastes like a grapefruit. So maybe they got the wrapper wrong. But I can't. I'm not, I'm not going to do the grapefruit. Okay. <laughs> All right. You ready to move on? Let's move on. Uh -huh. uh, ham and cheese corn puffs. I'm not excited about these. We've had something ham flavored before. It's another thing that I really did yeah, not like. Not so good artificial ham, ham flavor. So I'm... Um, Newfels. I'm a little weary of the Newfels. So they got the ham and cheese. All right, let's read about it real quick because I keep forgetting. For Germans, there's no such thing as too much ham and cheese. A typical breakfast, eggs with ham slices, and cheese on bread. Lunch, an open-faced ham and cheese sandwich. Dinner, a platter of rolled ham, cheese, pickled vegetables, and bread. And in between, these ham and cheese puffs. 
it only makes sense that Germany's quintessential food pairing would also be the country's favorite snack flavor. All right. Again, I don't know about these. I Ham flavoring is, you might just wait. You might just wait. I might. You were ready to hand it back before you ate it. <laughs> that is different. It's not as bad as the what I was thinking, and it's not as bad as the other one. It's like a hand fla ham flavored Cheeto. I actually you like get those. A lot of the cheese out of that. I actually like those. But just the salty of the ham too. I'm pretty good. Mm-hmm. Surprising. Surprising. That is a surprising one, y'all. Mm -hmm. I do. I like that a lot, actually. Yep. Hmm. Interesting. I did not expect that. I was really expecting to be like, mm -mm. All right. The Wonderland Calker Amusement Park is uniquely located at A, a former concert hall, B, a local dump, C, a nuclear power plant, or D, an underwater greenhouse. Nuclear power plant. Look at that. Start guessing the weirdest <laughs> answers and you get one right. <laughs> Number five, C. Is all that screaming from the roller coaster or the radiation? Just kidding. While the park was built at the site of what was supposed to be a nuclear power plant, local protests caused the plans to be scrapped before the reactor was built. So with the shell of a plant abandoned, there was only one logical thing to do. Turn it into an amusement park, complete with rides, rock climbing, hotels, and a bowling alley. Now the only thing it radiates is fun. Woohoo! <laughs> okay, let's keep it moving. Let's see what's next. Oh, sweet cherry cookies. I'm going to check out the ingredients while he is getting them out to show them to you. They almost look like... They look like a, a bit like the Danish cookies that you get at Christmas time. That's kind of the, kinda. the shape that they're in. Yeah, kind of. Go ahead and read about it. Sweet cherry cookies, soft and buttery with luscious German cherry. Pro tip, if a giant offers you cherries, say no. Say no. Okay. In the grim tale, the valiant little tailor, a giant lowers the uppermost branch of a cherry tree into the tailor's hand, supposedly so he can taste the fruit. But when the giant lets go, the branch springs upright and the tailor goes flying. Fortunately, the tailor later uses his wits to outsmart the giant. And fortunately for you, there are no giants standing in the way of these buttery cherry cookies. Enjoy. Mini oxide cookies. Okay. That's what they're called. Oxide, like oxen. I. Cookies. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Bubba. All right. So, here you go. This is weird. Mine is a little bit deformed. And you can see that it's like a cookie with another cookie on top of it. So oh. you've got a, it slid oh. off so you can see the bottom of it. Yeah. Yeah. I caught that as I was pulling it out of the package. Oh yeah, and I hadn't noticed it. that until you said it. Yep. So sure. it's got a bottom to it. And you can smell the cherry. It's very bready. Like biting into a biscuit. What I will say is they're very buttery. Very, very buttery and cookie part, and they're much softer than I thought they were going to be. Much more chewy. I thought that they would be more crunchy, mm -hmm. like the butter cookies that are more, you know, they're not. They're they're much softer, but they're very buttery. And the cherry, although they smelled really strong, wasn't that strong of a flavor. Yeah, the, I was surprised by biting into it. It's like a... Almost like biting into a cake or a biscuit. Mm -hmm. A little heavier than a cake. A little, uh, I need a little drink softer than really, a Really, really, um, also really rich. I think the butter. Yeah. So, uh, the Autobahn Highway is unique because A, it has no speed limit. B, nobody has ever crashed on it. C, police don't patrol it. Or D, it has a speed limit of a thousand miles per hour. 
you would be correct. It has no speed limit. Welcome to one of the safest highways in the entire world where you can go 100 plus miles an hour for over 8,000 miles. Despite the fact that more than half of the road has no legal speed limit, the famous highway sees 26% fewer accidents than those with speed limits. While potential limits of 80 miles an hour have been proposed in the past, to this day, these me those measures have never been passed, so locals can continue to drive as quickly as they please. Interesting. All right, what is up next, Kevy, Kevy, Kev? Ooh, marzipan bar. Ooh. So they gave us a, a little mini tube of marzipan, and I'm going to try it. I don't remember the last time I had marzipan, so I don't really remember if I liked it or not. Okay, well, after he opens it and gets it moving, I will read about it while he is tasting it. Florida tried to murder it so it doesn't look quite right. You can see where the chocolate melted and the fat came out and then reconstituted. People in northern Germany are going nuts for a certain almond candy marzipan. While the origin of this confection made from sugar, honey, and almond meal is wildly debated, many are quick to claim credit with the city of Lubeck as the top contender. In fact, it's considered the marzipan capital of the world. Once you try this soft, chewy, and immensely almondy candy coated in decadent dark chocolate, you'll see why its popularity has spread all over northern Germany. I found you chewing it. Kind of see it. It's kind of plain. Hmm. Um, not a lot of uh, excitement to it. It's just dark chocolate coated over a uh, over a bit of a paste, sort of. Hmm. Feels like a paste. All right, we have two more trivia and one more snack, and then something non-food. They must be including this each mm -hmm. time. Okay, so which is kind of cool. Okay. Um, after World War II, an American airman delighted the children of West Berlin by what? A, giving them each a Game Boy, B, teaching them to play baseball, C, teaching them how to garden, or D, airdropping candy from his plane. He airdropped candy from almost your last one. You are correct. After World War II, Berlin was split into two with West Berlin controlled by the US, US and Britain and France and East Berlin controlled by Russia. And when the Russian government cut off land routes into West Berlin, the only way to bring in supplies was by plane. With resources so limited, things like chocolate and candy became high-value commodities that could even be used as currency. That made all the more generous when Lieutenant Gail Halverson airdropped 23 tons of candy by via or via mini parachute to the children of West Berlin. Talk about a sweet gesture. All right, we have one more, Kevy. Pull it out. Milk chocolate with forest fruit filling. I'm going to check the label while you are getting it all open for us. So I am good to go on this one. It does look good. Florida murdered it much. You can smell the fruit coming out of it too. That's nice. So. It comes where you can split it in little squares. Yep. Florida got it a little bit, but not too bad. It was really yummy. Mm hmm. That's good. It is exactly what you would think of a fruit and chocolate bar, though. It's like the. You know, like the last box we did had the really gummy, um, almost gelatin wrapped in chocolate. This is what you would think of as the filling that would be in a candy bar. Super delicious. Very, very good. It's like yep. a mixed berry. Mixed fruit. Mixed fruit. And it was very, very good. Close your eyes and imagine yourself surrounded by the darkest evergreens you've ever seen. The scent of pines fill your senses and you hear the faint trickle of the river in the distance. Now take a piece of the chocolate and hold it to your nose. Are you smelling the plentiful wild berry bushes that dot the landscape? You may as well be. All the rich fruit flavors in this chocolate are also found in Germany's famous Black Forest. Very good, y'all. That one... Very good chocolate. We'll have to split that. That was very good. And as I mentioned... What? I'm not sure. I knew that's what you said. <laughs> right. 
Okay, so as mentioned, they've been including stuff like one thing that is not um, food related. And this time it's another game. We're gonna have game night locked. <laughs> okay, it says, play one of Germany's oldest games. Can't agree on who gets to eat the last yum? Compete for it. This month, you get to play one of the oldest strategy games in all of Europe, Mule, also known as Mills. Germans have been playing this game since ancient times as well as the Holy Roman Empire in the 9th century. In fact, some families even have heirloom game boards passed down through the generations. And once you've played a round or two, you'll see why this classic game has withstood the test of time. Show them the pictures so they can see what the board would look like. Here's the board down here. So I've seen that someplace, but I don't know that I've played it for sure. Um, it looks like a maze to me. It's it's uh, it's more like a checkers movement game, I think. Oh, that yeah, makes sense, too. I think you have to get from the outside to the center or the center to the outside. I don't remember. Interesting. All right, Kevy, what was your favorite? Um, the chocolate was really good. The lemon was really good. Really, there was nothing here that stood out as not good. So... Um, the onion, the ketchup, the ham and cheese crackers were all good. I can't really choose one. Um, I will. I can say that I did not like my little teeny weeny candies. Those, those were out. But everything else seemed to be okay. Even the marzipan is, is not bad. It's just kind of a little more plain than, than everything else. Uh, my favorite was the chocolate bar that we just had but the other one because it was so surprising are those ham and cheese yeah. flavored chips because they were really surprising and i really did end up liking those my least favorite by far was that ketchup chip i that, that i did not care for that at all um i wouldn't i would have you guess but again we have one more box and we are caught up so you may see that Coming up very, very soon, as in today or tomorrow, we shall see. Not really sure. It is a Christmas box, so it'll be all the countries and just each one, each of their like specialty Christmas items. So I'm looking forward to that. We will see you next time. Thanks, Kevin. See you. Bye, everybody.